I don't trust my emotions right now. There's so much going on that I figured I should be spiraling, but I'm not. Instead of making spreadsheets on moving costs and different scenarios on how to be the most cost effective and efficient in these next stages of my life. But I know, (laughs) inevitably, there's going to be a moment where I find some silence and some stillness, some peace, if you may, where I will be hit with the reality of things. I'm not looking forward to that. So if I talk about it, maybe it won't happen to the degree I'm anticipating. (laughs) But this week has been interesting. So typically I see my therapist on Mondays. Unfortunately, this week, the session had to be canceled, and she offered me another session time during the week, but I figured, you know what? This week has been boring. I have really nothing to talk about. I feel pretty good. And this is when everything started to happen. So last week, my mom and I did an interview with a journalist from The Record Journal. The Record Journal is a smaller publication in Connecticut, and I figured this is exactly the kind of coverage that we need. We want the story to be local. We want it national, but we also want it local. We want people to know about Sky and what we're going through. So the article was great, and that came out on Monday. Um, During that time, I sent, you know, the link of that article to a few of my friends, and the response was great. And one of my friends is a producer for a local station in Connecticut, and he offered to pitch the story to his team. But this was going to be different because the story was going to be with my mom. And I thought that is exactly what we need. I've been talking about Sky's case on social media and whoever will listen for about two years now. And I think what we need now is my mom. So I reached out to my mom. I told her the situation. And immediately she said no. (laughs) She said no. And I think I approached it wrong at first because I was like, you got five minutes to let me know. (laughs) But I did it in like a joking manner. My mom knows me. Um, So I didn't think that she was immediately going to say no. I offered if I was there with her through Zoom, would she do it? And she said yes. So... I let her think about it a little bit. Again, as I've said before, she's going through a lot right now. And for me to just throw this at her, I completely understand and sympathize with her. She does not need me to be asking her to have a television camera come into her home. I completely understood that. I gave her some time. My friend told me that he had a few hours before he was going to pitch the story. So. I was like, let me give my mom a moment. I know she's going to visit her mom right now and things aren't looking so great. (sighs) So I paused. I let time pass. Not too much time though, (laughs) because time is of the essence when it comes to trying to get something in the news. So within an hour and a half, maybe two hours, I reached out again and she said, okay. So I let my friend know, he pitched it, and then he told me which reporter was going to go to her house. I let her know, I exchanged the numbers with each other, and then I stepped back. And I was just hoping and praying that she was going to be okay. (sighs) And she did it. She did it. She wasn't okay. (laughs) She wasn't okay with it. (laughs) But she did it. I didn't expect her to be okay because this is not a place where she's comfortable. She did the press conference in Tokyo where there were numerous cameras that we were in front of. But it was just one time. And this was of the essence. Sky was missing. We needed leads and answers. So of course, of course you do it. But also that experience is so traumatizing. It's so traumatizing. So I don't fault her 
for being a bit more apprehensive when going in front of a camera. I think she's a little bit better when it's a journalist and it's going to be in print. That is definitely something that's more up her alley. When a camera is on her, she blanks. She blanks out. She freezes. Deer in headlight situation. So for her to do that, I was so, so proud. Side note, not to shame my father, but he went upstairs into the bedroom and hid. He didn't make his face shown. And again, I can't fault him for that. He's never been in front of the camera. He's never said anything publicly. This is something, this is a situation that destroys people. And it's really hard to understand that for a lot of people. When you can be on the outside and you can say, I would have done this and this and this, and I don't understand why they can't just do that. Because, it's, because you don't understand. It's an experience that I don't want to share with anybody. I don't want people to know what it can feel like to have somebody go missing. Have all that weight on you. I don't want people to know. I can explain it. I hope that people understand and I can accept the criticisms because I know. I know if I was looking at this situation from the outside, I would say the same stuff. I would say, why couldn't you have done more? Why couldn't you advocate, be in front of the camera, be annoying? You can't. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. It is not for the weak. And no matter how strong you think you are, you will break at some point. So, my mom did that interview that evening around 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and it was on the 11 o'clock news. In the morning, the uh, reporter reached out and wanted consent for it to go national. And now it's national news. And that's amazing. And my mom did it. I'm so proud of her. It took a lot. And it's exactly what we needed to get more eyes on Sky's case. (sighs) And to really push forward for the family to get answers, for all of us to get answers at this point. There are so many people that are now invested. My husband had gone through all the comments um, on the social media accounts and screenshotted them and sent them to my mom because when I called her the next morning, (laughs) I could tell that she was probably, she's been crying for a really, really long time. Um, But I think it's good. I think it's good because she, I think, well, in any situation, you need to go through it. You can't go around it. You can't ignore it. You can't stuff it down. You can't just turn your back on it and move 3,000 miles away. You have to fucking face it. And it hurts. But she faced it. She did that. And now... I'm waiting to see if there is another interview in the works with another station, another entity, and we're going to do what we need to do in order to get the word out there. This is bigger than us. It really is. And I'm really so thankful for all of the support that I've gotten. And it's taken about two years at this point to get this far. So the more coverage, the better. And we're going to Japan. Another thing. Oh, my God, another thing. (laughs) So yesterday I received a phone call from the detective in Southington. He was informing me, just to give me an update, that he still does not have a point of contact for us in Japan. And I said, that is fine. (laughs) I am an expert in patience. But I also told him as well, because 
The reporters have been reaching out to the Southington police. Um, they are not allowed to comment on the situation, which is fine because I can give you all the information that I know. <laughs> and I made him aware of the GoFundMe and I told him that I, of course, am able to wait for this info in order to make sure that the logistics are in place and we can go to Japan and not meet any walls. You know, I don't want any roadblocks. I want a smooth trip. My mother deserves this. So I informed him of, of the GoFundMe and I said that this actually is, it's good. This gives us enough lead time to make sure that the whole world knows that we're going to Japan. I think that is the best thing to do given the situation. So that is that. He also asked, just, I don't think I've ever covered this before. He also asked, because Interpol was inquiring about Sky's dental records. So early on in the case, it was never mentioned that this might be a necessary tool. Because Sky's case wasn't taken seriously in the beginning. You know, they were just like, she's 21, she left. Yeah, she went to Japan, but what are we going to do? That's kind of, you know, what we were met with back in 2008. Nothing was ever mentioned about dental records. So over the years, my mom did reach out to the dentist inquiring about Sky's records. And at that point, they no longer had her records. So I reached out to my mom again yesterday to just verify because there's a lot of moving parts with Sky's case. And sometimes you just forget. And I honestly just forgot, like, did we ever get them? I didn't know. In the back of my head, I was thinking, oh, my mom has a file. She has them. <laughs> but I was also like, I might be misremembering this because I think we never got them. So unfortunately, we do not have Skye's dental records. Her records were not saved with her last dentist. So I informed the detective of that who will inform Interpol and that is where we are with that situation so it's been a week it really has and I'm also trying to prepare for my cross-country move moving back to Connecticut with all this happening I'm really having some second thoughts I was like do I do this do I move back to Connecticut I've been in California for almost a decade now. I had my son here. This is all he knows. I've established myself here. And I love the weather. <laughs> but lately, the pros of living in Los Angeles have been dwindling. So it just seems to be the right time. Though I don't know if it's the right time exactly with everything going on. It's just the way things are lining up. And honestly, the biggest stress in this move is trying to figure out how to move my two cats. If anybody has any suggestions, please let me know, because it's either me flying them out by myself and buying like an extra ticket for them, or really that's it. <laughs> We're not driving with them. We cannot have them in the car for that long. So, but if you guys have any like natural, like anti-anxiety things for cats, please let me know. You can send me an email about it. It's all good. <laughs> oh, so that has been this week and it's Thursday. It's only Thursday. <laughs> the week's almost done, right? <laughs> and I should be having my therapy session on Monday again, as long as everything goes good. Anyways, my friends, thank you for hanging out with me and listening to all of this unfold. I'm so happy to have you be a part of it. Um, if you're ever on TikTok and you want to share any of the videos I have out there, please do that because the more people that know about Sky's case, the better. Anyways, guys, this has been 
Therapy Notes, Session 19.